in the shadowy corners of power and influence, where the lines between truth and deception blur, lies a world that few dare to explore. Join us as we venture into the labyrinth of the unspoken, the hidden, the deliberately obscured. We shine a light on the dogma that's been fed to the masses, unmasking the intricate web of deception spun by those who wish to control you. Welcome to Beyond Undisclosed. The truth is waiting. Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and sentient beings of all classifications. This is your host, Dan, broadcasting from the nebulous edges of reality, where the improbable is mundane and the mundane, well, simply doesn't exist. Welcome to Beyond Undisclosed, the show that dares to delve into the depths of the unknown, the unspoken, and the utterly absurd. In recent news, the world has been rocked by an unprecedented development. The Wagner Group, a Russian private military company, has been trying to recruit over 1,500 convicted felons to take part in Russia's war in Ukraine. However, many are refusing to join, a senior U.S. defense official reported. This sudden increase in Wagner troops coincides with the rise of a new kind of weapon that has been causing a stir, and it's not your typical military hardware. No, this is something far more insidious, far more personal, and far more devastating. We're talking about the Karens. Named after former lovers and spouses, these units have undergone rigorous training in the art of verbal warfare. Their weapon of choice? Words. But not just any words. These are phrases so potent, they could make a Vogon poet reconsider their career. Firstly, we have the K-77, also known as the I want to speak to your manager missile. This long-range, high-impact weapon of mass demoralization has a blast radius of 500 meters and a maximum range of 50 kilometers. It's not your run-of-the-mill complaint. It's a meticulously crafted verbal projectile designed to reduce even the most hardened battalion to a quivering mess of apologies and refunds. Its deployment is strategic, aimed at the heart of enemy morale, with a blast radius that leaves no one unaffected. Next, we have the K-88, or the Do You Know Who I Am? Grenade. This close combat weapon has a blast radius of 10 meters and can sow confusion and disarray in its wake. Its effectiveness is unparalleled, especially in enclosed spaces like supermarkets and coffee shops. It's akin to a pan-galactic gargle blaster, but for your self-esteem. This weapon is deployed in close quarters, its blast radius designed to create maximum confusion and disarray. But the Karen's arsenal doesn't stop at strategic complaints and identity crises. They've also mastered the art of the insult, turning seemingly harmless phrases into potent weapons. Take, for instance, the K-200, or the Sex ID pistol. This small arms fire weapon is used to accuse anyone who disagrees with them of the most heinous crimes, causing immediate social ostracization and reputation damage within a radius of 20 meters. Then there's the K-201, or the Mega Supporter shotgun. This weapon is used to label anyone who challenges them as a supporter of controversial political ideologies, causing immediate polarization and conflict within a radius of 30 meters. These insults, while seemingly petty and insignificant, are incredibly effective on the battlefield. They serve to distract and disorient the enemy, rendering them incapable of effective retaliation. It's like throwing a babble fish into a group of Vogons, the resulting confusion and chaos provide the perfect opportunity for the Karens to strike. Now, let's delve into the defensive mechanisms of the Karens. These are not your average shields. These are phrases so potent, they render the Karens virtually invincible on the battlefield. First, there's the K-99, or the, my taxes pay your salary, armor. This shield has a deflection radius of 100 meters and can deflect any criticism or attack, rendering the Karens impervious to any form of attack. It's like the somebody else's problem field, but for Karens. Then we have the K-100, or the, I know my rights, barrier. This shield has a deflection radius of 50 meters and is activated in the face of incoming criticism, its deflection capabilities rendering the Karens impervious to any form of attack. The K-101, or the, I'm recording this, force field, is another defensive mechanism. It's activated when Karens feel threatened, creating an invisible barrier that deflects any incoming attacks within a radius of 30 meters. 
Lastly, the K102, or the Al Suyu shield. This is the ultimate defensive mechanism, with a deflection radius of 200 meters, rendering the Karens virtually invincible on the battlefield. It's like the somebody else's problem field, but for Karens. The Karens have mastered the art of the oxymoron and hypocrisy, turning seemingly harmless phrases into potent weapons. It's like a babble fish, but for conflict. Their deployment is strategic, their targets carefully selected, and their impact, devastating. The deployment of the Karens is a game changer on the battlefield. Their missions, classified to the highest degree, involve strategic placements in key enemy locations. Their presence has been known to cause a significant increase in battlefield suicides, a tragic yet undeniable testament to their effectiveness. However, it's not all doom and gloom. The deployment of the Karens has led to a significant reduction in ammunition expenditure, maintaining the same death rate on the battlefield while saving a considerable amount of resources. In recent news, there have been suspicions that these Karen units may have been deployed against the Russians. Unconfirmed reports suggest a sudden increase in customer complaints and requests to speak to managers across the country. Coincidence? We think not. The deployment of the Karens has sparked a global debate, with many comparing it to the deployment of nuclear weapons. The sheer scale and potential devastation of such a deployment have led to widespread objections. Yet, the powers that be seem undeterred, leading many to question the ethics and implications of such a decision. So, there you have it, folks. The next time you hear the phrase, I'd like to speak to your manager, don't just roll your eyes. It might be a Karen unit, ready to unleash havoc. And that's all for tonight, folks. Tune in next time for more undisclosed reports from the world beyond. Good night, and remember, the truth is out there, and it's weirder than you think. This is Dan, signing off. For those of you with a keen ear, you may have noticed a pattern in our broadcast tonight. The first letter of every tenth word forms a secret message. Can you crack the code? Review future editions of Beyond Undisclosed for more coded news. Until then, stay vigilant, stay curious, and most importantly, stay undisclosed. <laughs>